So in this video, we're going to go through this example here. So if f of x is equal to x squared, sketch the graph of y is equal to negative 3 f of x minus 4 plus 2. So notice here how we're combining a bunch of transformations. So we're going to go through the steps that we went through in the previous video and I kept them written down over here so we can easily refer to them. Before we get into the steps of graphing this example, I want you to take note of how in this case the parent function and the general transformations are separated. Usually in examples before we've been combining them. Now, what do I mean by this? Let's say that I gave you this question without this part here. And I said, just graph me this. y is equal to negative 3f of x minus 4 plus 2. Well, you don't know what this f here represents, what the parent function is, right? You can apply these transformations on x, on x squared, on the absolute value of x, the square root of x, 1 over x, and a bunch of other parent functions that aren't even in this course. So be careful when dealing with that. I notice a lot of students that I tutor are coming up to me and saying, how do you graph just this part here, this y is equal to negative 3 f of x minus 4 plus 2? And I ask them, what these are just general transformations. How can we graph this? We don't even know what the parent function is. So whenever you're given transformations in this general form, you need to know what parent functions they're being applied to in order to graph it. Now, in contrast to the parent and the transformations being separated, this is how this question would look if I combine them. Okay, if I combine the parent function x squared and these transformations, it would look like negative 3 x minus 4 squared plus 2. And I could have easily just said sketch the graph of this function here without saying what the parent function is and then giving the general transformations. So this form here is when the parent and the transformations are combined into one. And when they're combined into one, you need to figure out the parent function. You already know what the transformations would be, right? The a value is negative 3 in this one, a value is negative 3 in this one, c values 2, c values 2, etc., etc. However, in this one, the parent function is given, and then you're given the general transformations. And here, the parent function isn't given. You have to figure it out. However, at this point, we should be able to tell that the parent function of this function here, this negative 3 x minus 4 squared plus 2, is x squared. This is just a parabola that's been transformed. Now, I just erased that previous note so I can have more room in order to follow these steps to uh, sketch this example. However, make sure that you wrote down that note that we took before about the transformations and the parent function being combined or separated. It's super important. You need to recognize what form it's taking before you get into these steps. So step one in the graphing process is we have to state what the parent function is. And because the parent function and the transformations are separated, it's easy to see that the parent function is x squared. Step two is we have to state the transformation values a, k, d, and c. And the way that I like to do step two is I like to write out the general transformation format and then write under it write out the transformations that we're dealing in this specific question. And then it's easy to see which number relates to which letter. So this negative 3 is the A value. Now this one's a little tricky. What is the K value? There's nothing attached to the X, but if you think about it, it's almost like there's this 1 in front. Right? 1 times x minus 4 is the same as just having x minus 4. So the k value is 1. The d value is 4, x minus 4, x minus d. So d is 4. And then the c value is positive 2. 
Now, sometimes a question may ask you what the actual transformations are, depending on the values that A, K, D, and C take. So you would have to rewatch the videos where we go over each letter individually. But let's go through these. So an A value of negative three means that the function is vertically stretched by three and there's a reflection in the x-axis. A K value of one means that there are no transformations. A D value of positive four means that the function moves four units to the right. And a C value of two means the function moves two units up. Now step three is we make a table of values for the parent function. So I made that right here, this table of values from negative two to positive two, and this is for our parent function, x squared. Now step four is we have to make a table of values for the transform function through the mapping process. So we're gonna take all of these coordinates in the parent function, and we're gonna map them, put them through the mapping process to get the coordinates of the transform function. And if you remember the formula that we use for that, the one you have to memorize, is x over k plus d for the x values and then a y plus c for the y values. So let's start with the x values. We got x over k, the k value is one, so x over one plus our d value of four. So the formula in this case, in our case, is x over one, which is just x plus four. What about the y value? So we got a y plus c. Well, our a value is negative three, and our c value is two. So all of the y values, we would multiply by negative three, and then we would add two. So this here is our mapping formula for these specific transformations. And now we apply the mapping formula to each of these coordinates separately. So for example, this negative two here, we would put negative two plus four gives us a value of two. So this negative two gets mapped to positive two for these transformations. Similarly, negative one plus four gives us three, zero plus four gives us four, et cetera, et cetera. So all I'm doing is I'm taking each of these x coordinates and putting them through this formula to get the new x coordinates of our transform function. Same thing for the y's, I'm putting them through this formula, negative three y plus two. So this four, so it's negative three times four plus two gives us negative 10. Negative three times one plus two gives us negative one, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm taking all of these y values, putting them through this formula to get the new y values for our transform function. So I took the coordinates from the table and wrote them out as a list in nicer form. So the two and negative 10, the three and the negative one, et cetera, et cetera. And now since we have the points of the transform function, we can go to step five, which is just graphing them. So taking these points and then plotting them on the graph. So this point here is two and negative 10, three and negative one, four and two, five and negative one, and then six and negative 10 down here. And taking all the points and then drawing the function, we would have this parabola that opens down with a vertex at four and two. Another thing I want you to notice is how this graph is fairly consistent with the transformations that we described here in red, right? So if we took a parabola x squared and we vertically stretched it, this graph looks like it's been stretched then reflected in the x-axis, it would be pointing down like this graph is, and then moving it four to the right, and then two units up, we would have the vertex now at four and two. The vertex before was at uh, zero and zero, but then this point got mapped to four and two, so four and two is our new vertex. So overall, we can be pretty confident with this diagram that we got it correct. Now as a little bonus and a little extra practice, let's state what the domain and range would be of this transform function. So I erased the table before, but you can just add this onto your notes because you'll have more room than I do. So the domain of this function, since it's a parabola, the x values can be anything. So x is an element of real numbers. There are no restrictions on x. Now what about the range? What values can y take? Well, y can be anything as long as it's less than or equal to positive two, the max value of two. So 
y can be anything as long as it's less than or equal to positive 2, which is the max value of the vertex.